Well, that's a good thought, isn't it? Amen. You don't know which way to go and what to do. Bow the knee. Let's stand together. Take your Bible. If you would, go back with me to the book of Song of Solomon. I'll share with you again. Get to Psalms, Proverbs. Take a right. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon again tonight, if you would. I stayed in the Song of Solomon quite a bit this morning. I'd love to do that tonight, but if I do, I'm going to get caught up. And I'm never going to get uh, to all of the scriptures that I want to give you tonight. <coughs> Song of Solomon, chapter number two. I want you to look, if you would, now this time tonight, the latter part of the verses that I've read. I want you to look down, if you would, at verse number 11. The Bible says, For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. The voice of the turtle in hand is heard in our land. The fig tree put forth her green figs. The vines with a tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, thou art in the cliffs of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Father, I pray you'll continue to bless this message. Thank you, God, for what our hearts felt this morning. Lord, I do pray, God, that you would touch us again this evening. God, I pray you'll give us what we need in this hour. We'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. you can be seated. This morning I preached on a love story, the Song of Solomon. I talked about how that this chapter of the Word of God deals with eschatology, though we may not look at it many times, it's there. Then tonight, as I've read a little farther down, I read tonight where the Bible says, Again, rise my love in verse 10, my fair one, and come away. There is no doubt that a lot of the Bible is not written to us, but it is all for us. The Song of Solomon is a great love story that God has with the nation of Israel. And His love story will not end until one day the Son of God comes sets his feet down on the Mount of Olives and establishes his going. It has already been a scientific fact. It is not a rumor that uh, several years ago, Holiday Inn and a couple of other major companies had a desire that they wanted to try to put a hotel or a motel there, the Mount of Olives in Israel. And engineers told them that it was an impossibility to do that. They said it would not be feasible. And their exact words for that were this. They said the ground is very unstable. They said that it's almost like a fault line on the Mount of Olives. They said really it's not going to take much and something could shake that mountain and that mountain could clave asunder and you would lose your hotel sitting there. I could have told them that a long time before they ever talked to anybody else. And the reason for that is, is because one day the Son of God is going to set His feet down upon that mountain and the earth is going to claim asunder and you and I realize that time is fastly approaching. I thought about today as I continue to find a little bit of what's going on around the world. And uh, one thing I love in school, I, I'm not much into math. I don't care a lot about biology and all those things. If you were to give me trigonometry or geometry, I'd look at you and I'd be like, you know, John had three balls. He gave away two of them. I mean, he's left. That's math to me. Amen. And, uh, but I want to say this to you. When it comes to history, I love history. I would have loved to be a history major. I enjoy studying about history. And so this intrigues me about what's going on around the world. For many of you that don't know much about the geography of the Middle East, you need to understand that Gaza, as you heard this morning,
morning in Joshua 24, Gaza belongs to the nation of Israel. Now, why is that so important? You've got to understand when it comes to end time Bible prophecy, you've got to understand that God's going to give Israel all things, and they're going to have that. Now, could this be the final push? Could this be the time when Israel does not listen to the United States? Could this be the time that they occupy Gaza? If they do and they don't leave, it's going to throw the Middle East into turmoil. Egypt's going to be upset. Iran's going to be upset. Iraq's going to be upset. The United States government's going to be upset because we're bothering them. And so could this be the time that Israel says we're not going to back away. We're not if you remember some years ago, when was it? 1970s, I guess. I, Israel, I took that place in what's known. I was in a six day or seven day war. That's all it took. Oh, they said it would shake everything. It'd be a war for years. And God's chosen people went in with the second greatest military in the world and they took that strip in about six days' time. Then all of a sudden, all that has begun today is all because. All the hatred, all the malice, all the violence, everything that's going on today is because the hatred, not for just Israel, but for the God of Israel. Do you understand? Why are you and I hated in America? And by the way, let me say to you, we are. You are a minority. You need to understand tonight, we are not the popular crowd in America. You and I need to understand that for the majority of the world, the world hates our God. I never thought I'd see the day where only one-fifth of America have any kind of organized religion in their life. We are becoming England. We are becoming a nation that does not know God. We are raising generations that have no clue what God is. We literally have in the shadow of the steeple of Calvary Baptist Church, we literally have people that do not know what it means to be saved. Amen. And so because of that, we live in a country today in which everything is preparing for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Man, what an exciting time. What a wonderful time. Amen. And listen, I want to say this. I'm not saddened by it. I'm not saddened by it. Amen. I mean, what is it going to be like when Jesus comes? I mean, can you imagine what it's going to be like for those who are saved when the Lord comes? If it's this wonderful to serve Him now, if it's this wonderful to feel His presence now, if it's this wonderful to be around when God shows up, you know these services you get in where you say, man, I've never enjoyed anything like that. Man, that was great. Well, friend, you and I have not even seen His face. We've not even bowed at His feet in the physical, but thank God it's getting closer to what we'll be able to buy and lay our crowns at the feet of the Son of God and hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. I believe with all my heart. Now listen, you can play games with it. You can put it aside. You can do a lot of things. You can say a lot of things that you want to say, but there is no doubt that the Lord is coming. Amen. No doubt. Amen. I pray it's in my lifetime. I do I would love to see the rapture. Amen. I'd love to be a part. I guess the only sad thing would be is those we know that are unsaved. But I don't know how burdened we are about that. Because we're not doing a lot about it. You know, we we, we got to learn to share the gospel. Amen. We've got to learn to tell people about Jesus. We've got to quit being ashamed. We've got to quit being distant about the things of God. We've got to quit spending so much time talking about the cowboys and, and the panthers and, and, and tar heels and blue devils and all of that. We spend so much time in our life talking about that to unsaved people, but we talk to them none about the Lord Jesus Christ. And here, here we are living in a time today 
when it is so evident that Jesus is coming. Amen. So evident. Well, I don't know how long it'll be, but I know he's coming. Amen. Now, I left this morning talking about he loved me and he bought me and he stayed me and, and he uh, embraced me through this chapter of the Song of Solomon. Now tonight, I want to give you several things about the coming of the Lord. First thing I want you to understand is there is a promise of His coming. There is a promise of His coming. And I think you need to understand that. Listen, the Bible says in verse 7 of the Song of Solomon, I charge you when you daughters of Jerusalem by the rows and by the hides of the field that you stir not up nor awake my love till He please. In other words, here's what He said. He's not going to get up. He's not going to come. He's not going to in the New Testament, does it not? The Bible says, and Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, ye may be also. It's going to be interesting. But I believe with all my heart that if Israel occupies God, I believe with all my heart there's going to be a temple started. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart that the abomination of desolation is closer. I believe with all my heart that the Antichrist wants now to set up a throne in Israel. Amen. I believe with all my heart he wants to overthrow the people of God. Amen. I don't know who he is. I don't know where he's at. I, I really do believe he's alive. I really do. And I will say this to you. I do believe that the hands of everything is in control by the Lord. And I believe the hands of hurricanes and the hands of elections and the hands of everything are in the hands of God. I am convinced that when you're wicked and vile and care nothing about God, that God says, all right, is this what you want? I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to let you have what you want. And I've said for a long time, the worst thing that God could ever do to America I've always said if God ever pulled his hand back if God ever pulled his hand back Amen. Now, Harry was telling me today about people in Baptist Hospital losing their jobs people in restaurants losing their jobs understanding that people can't afford insurance companies are saying you can't work for us you got to be part time why? The economic structure has to get bad. For us to trust somebody or for the world to trust somebody Amen. like the other, for the world to be able to say, we'll take a mark under our skin. Amen. For the world to be able to say, yes, we will be willing to sell our soul out so that you uh, can give us food. Understand, even during the tribulation, Children will be born. And listen, if a mother ain't going to live for God now, if she has a child during that time, and that child's starving to death, and that child needs meal, she's going to run down there to her friendly government and say, put something under my hand so you'll know who I am. Friend, I'm telling you, it's closer than we realize. Matter of fact, our own government right now, and this is before Obama, our own government right now, is working on a way that every American can buy groceries, do your banking, keep up with your credit card bill, keep up with everything. Listen, they're getting right now where they can keep up with everything you do and even where you're at. It's all preparation. It's all getting us ready. And the problem is, is that the church is a sleeping side. We're just sitting back. We're rocking the gospel. We're eating popcorn and cookies and drinking coffee instead of preaching to the world that there is a God that is a God of love but He's also a God of judgment and He's coming and we need to be ready. I was listening to a message preached by a preacher that I know the other day. and He had five points and I won't get into them but he said he preached on five things that will happen. 
five things that will happen for Mary she turns on Israel. I won't even give them to you because I don't think I'm in depth enough to preach them. But it will be amazing what's going to happen. Let's be honest. Some of you old timers, have you ever, and I mean that respect, have you ever seen a day when people are so scared about what tomorrow holds? Right. 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 Have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen a day when people are so concerned about their job, about their money, about their income, about their retirement? I've never seen a day. Why? It's preparation. I'm telling you, it will get so bad that our government can't fix it, that other individuals can't fix it. It will get so bad that everybody will say, Lord, what are we going to do? We don't have anything. What are we going to do? And then all of a sudden, somewhere on the scene, right. Read your Bible. Amen. Somewhere on the scene there will come a man. A son of perdition. There will come a man that's Amen. got all the economic answers. Amen. Amen. Oh, preacher, surely people would never, would never fall for that. Who's our president? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying in the sense of who he is except in this, in this idea. Look at his name. You remember after the, uh, the towers fell? Would you ever thought you would have lived in a country where even a name of an individual would have been the President of the United States that even was similar to the people that killed more Americans on our soil that's ever been done in history? Apart from the Civil War. So when he comes on the scene, he will literally be able to soothe you, smoothly say, I can fix this. I can see the stock market start to rise. I can see the news stations get on and say, finally, somebody's got the answer. You and I, and I'll be the Bible teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. I pre-trib, you're not save your breath. Because I am. I'm not going through the tribulation period as a child of God. I can take you to the book of Revelation and I can show you in chapter 4 and verse number 1 where the church exit stage left. Amen. I can show you where we're going and I can show you that we don't get back to the end of the book when we come to live and to reign with Him. Amen. The promise of His coming. Now listen. When Jesus ascended back in heaven, He told the disciples through the angels. Why stand ye gazing, realizing that He is coming by? I go to prepare a place. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there, ye may be also. That's the promise of His coming. How many of you really believe in your heart that Jesus is coming again? Say, oh, I do. I do. <clears throat> Secondly, the person of His coming. Verses 8 through 10 of John 14. And even the verses, if we look back here in Song of Solomon. Watch verse 8. I love the wording of your Bible. Verse number 8 was the second word, voice. The voice of my beloved. Hallelujah. Brother Justin and I were sitting down. Brother Justin's a great Bible student. We were talking about this, how God used that word voice. The voice of my beloved. In other words, here's what he said. When the, that, that, that cry said, when I hear the voice of my beloved. Got to thinking about what the Bible says about the trump of God and the voice of the archangel and the fact that there'll be a voice that sounds and the fact that there'll be a trumpet that blows and there's no doubt that here's the word of God. God is saying to us that not only is there the promise of His coming, but secondly, there is the, there is the person of His coming. Amen. Oh, listen. What does the promise of His coming do for us? Well, it's in... It's, <laughs> It's imminent. It, it, it's, it's, it's before us. Listen to what Jesus said in 1 Thessalonians 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh Amen. as a thief in the night. Amen. Back when I was going to boy, how many of y'all remember years ago, 
They used to have a little film they play in church. It's called Thief in the Night. You might remember that stuff. Oh, yeah. Man, we told it years ago. <coughs> Listen. World right now is not expecting anything. One fifth of America doesn't even believe in God. Right. Doesn't believe in the worship of God. Everybody's going through their deal. Everybody's looking to Fox News for the answer or their news network for the answer or their politician for the answer. Nobody's really paying attention. Right. Nobody's really paying attention. Won't you talk to Brother William or Miss Catherine or Brother Jerry Harmon or some of them that have been this thing a long time. Ask them have they ever seen it on this matter before. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's him. He's coming. Listen to this. It's also encouraging. Hey. The returning of the Lord is encouraging. People say to me, oh, preacher, I don't like when people preach on eschatology. I don't like when they talk about Jesus coming or hell. That bothers me. I just don't feel well. Honey, I'm going to tell you what. Hey, I've been to this a good while, and I couldn't think of anything greater to happen than Jesus split the eastern sky and called us home to be with Him. Thank God that's so encouraging to me. Amen. Only thing you have to do for the rest of your life is worship Him. Amen. And that's eternity. All you gotta have to do is worship. Just worship. Hallelujah. Man, that's wonderful. Amen. You say, well, preacher, when we sleep, we'll need to. No night. It's all daytime. Sun's always shining. The coming of the Lord's exciting, isn't it? He was testified of these things, saying, Surely I come quickly. And the writer of John says, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. There's a promise, but there's a person that was coming. Who's coming? Who's coming? I, I, you know, I hear these people all the time trying to tell jokes and talk about how, well, praise God, go get there and stand before Gabriel and Michael. No, you're not. Gabriel and Michael are not a door. An angel is not a door. Amen. There is but one way to heaven, and the Bible said the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. He's not going to send an angel. He's not going to send anybody else. The Lord Himself is going to be coming after Him. Amen. The person of His coming. The Lord Himself. Could you imagine just going through a day in your life? You're at work. You're driving down the road. You're not even paying attention. Just, just another day. And next thing you know, in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, which is quicker than a blink, there you are in the clouds. And for the first time since you were born again, there's Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Are you listening? There's a person of His coming. Oh, He's coming. He's coming. Number three, there's the purpose of His coming. The Bible says, and I can go back in verses 9 and 10 of the parallel of Song of Solomon. My beloved is like a row of a young heart. Well, he stand behind our wall. He looking forth for the windows. This is a bridegroom showing himself through the lines. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Come away from what? What's the purpose of his coming? Do you know why Jesus is coming? He is coming to get us out of this sin curse, born, laden world. He is coming to get us out of this mess. Hey, listen to me. The chapter started off with a beloved where that, where that bride is there among the thorns. You know what the greatest purpose of that bridegroom is? He's waiting on the dad to say to him, go down and get your bride and bring your bride out of that mess. Do you realize that Jesus is longing? Do you realize that Jesus has a desire? Do you realize that Jesus wants to be with us? Yes. By permission of the Father. I am convinced that one day the last person will be saved. One day the last person will come to Christ and that will be Him. Yes. And God will 
call us home. Did you know the purpose of our Lord is not just to leave us down here? Once we're saved, it can't get any better. Everybody listen, it doesn't get no better than being saved. Here. Here. Are you listening? Here. Oh yeah, preacher, what about making a lot of money? It's no better. Oh, preacher, what about getting married and have 14 kids? It's no better. <laughs> oh, preacher, what? No, there's nothing better than being saved. And the only way you and I are going to be better is if we're not here. And the reason we kind of shudder at that is because we're so earthly minded. We walk in the flesh instead of the spirit. Well, well, I know my daddy in heaven. I don't know my Bible says you be known as you know. You take it whatever that means. I don't know. I know it won't matter. See, we are involved in this world by a love that is restrained by our flesh. You know, I love Danielle more than I love any of you. I do. Way more than I love any of you. I mean, you know, I can say that it sounds mean, but you know what I mean. Just like if I'd ask Jody, I Jody, you love your preacher? Yeah. You love him as much as you do your boys? Are you kidding me, preacher? No. If the preacher's in front of a train and the boys in front of a train, who's Jody going to have? Well, he's lived long enough anyway. Amen. That's it. That's right. Why? Because we are restricted by love. Do you understand that? But don't you listen? Kevin won't be like that. In heaven, Jody will love me just as much as she loves him most. Right. It'll be unconditional. It won't be any of that. We got out here, we get to heaven, we're going to get our grip, get over the corner. No, that's Baptist church. Right. <laughs> that's not heaven. Yeah. Ain't going to be no cliques in glory. Yeah. Ain't going to be no mass buddies in heaven. Matter of fact, I, when I get there, I'm going to get fatty crossed. And won't nobody be able to spread no rumors about me hanging out with a woman. <laughs> Dear associate pastor, I will sing it better than you sing. <laughs> I'm just restricted by the fall. Say amen right there. Thank you. Some trained kids, brother. The purpose of his coming. See if this verse makes you feel good. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yep. With the what? There's that word. The voice of my beloved. The Lord Himself will send the shout of the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Why? Six foot farther ago, maybe? I don't know. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and this is my favorite part. And Amen. so shall we ever be. Amen. With each other, no. With mom and daddy, no. With the angels, no. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. There was a day that used to excite Christians. Sure. Amen. Amen. The purpose of His coming. Number four. Verse 11 in our text, John 14 as well, if you want to look, the period of His coming. Verse 11, look what it says. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The period of His coming. I don't have time to get into this. There's a little bit of studying this today. This may be a little beyond me. But there's the analogy of God's time. Somebody would say, oh preacher, we've been hearing this for a long time. Well, let me read the Bible says. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day with the Lord is thus a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. How long ago did Jesus raise from the dead? Could we be living in the third day? Are we the generation living in that day when Jesus is coming? Now I'm going to tell you what you're not going to get to heaven. You're not going to get to heaven 
on a kindergarten prayer that never changed you. You're not going to get... Now, you can be saved at a young age, but if you're still living like the devil and you walk out of here, you better get saved. Amen. Understand, when I grew up as a boy, one of the things that kept me under conviction was the power of the Lord. And if it was this day to day, I'd be grabbing on a preacher and holding on to his leg and saying, tell me how to be saved. Here's what God said about that time. The period of His coming. Right now. And after six days, Jesus had taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, bring them up to a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And His face did shine as the sun, and His raiment was white as light. Right after He was transfigured before them. You could imagine, man, they must have stayed there forever. Jesus made it clear to them. <coughs> Well, there's a world down here that needs God. And we better go tell them. Because there's going to come a day when the door of the ark is going to close. I don't want to sensationalize Scripture. But I try to imagine sometimes not what the Bema seat is going to be like. I, I, I tremble at the Bema seat. Because at the Bema seat, there'll be no lost people. But at the Bema seat, there will be Christians. And we will give an account <coughs> from the very day we got saved. Not to an angel. Not to the preacher. We will give an account to Jesus Himself. Gold, silver, and precious stone or wood, hay, and stubble. And it'll be consumed like that if it wasn't real. When I mean gospel songs, I mean, I mean sermons. Yes. You stand there thinking, oh, I did this and did that and it meant nothing. Because it was wood, hay, and stubble. The first of the Word of God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I believe occurs after the beam of sin. Because I believe they'll be weeping at the beam of sin. <clears throat> I believe some of us are going to be very disappointed in the way we've lived for God. You better listen. It may not mean much to you now. You might play games at the foot of the cross now. You may use Jesus as a crutch or a spire tire in the back of the car now. But one day when you stand before Him, you're going to be so ashamed. You're going to be so disappointed. Amen. You're going to be so destroyed in your spirit over the fact that you could have served Him. Amen. And you could have lived for Him. Amen. But I go beyond that. What I ask you is, what is the great white throne judgment going to be like? Yes. You've got to understand, the great white throne judgment, there are going to be those there that will say, Lord, did we not do this in your name and that in your name? And did we not do other things? And they say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Yes. You're right. And there'll be no mercy. There'll be no mercy mercy. There'll be no grace. None. Today is your Savior, then He's your judge. Now listen. The Bible says the church, we will judge angels. Look at the Word of God. But that crowd that's being judged and sentenced to hell, all we be is a grandstand. It would be terribly sad, wouldn't it? And I don't want to sensationalize because I don't know how all the saints of all the ages will be around that great white throne. I don't know. But I wonder what it would be like for somebody you worked with. Somebody you're south of every day. 
somebody you went to school with, but you were so ashamed to talk to people about Jesus. Oh, they might have saw you pray. They might have saw your t-shirt. But you never said to them, do you have a personal relationship with Christ? Because you would get embarrassed. Or you'd be afraid they wouldn't like it. And then one day at the judgment of God, that person would be sentenced to hell. With no hope. And you can't do a thing. I've heard people sensationalize it and say, oh, they'll be screaming, why didn't you tell me? I don't know, I can't find Scripture. It's a possibility. But I'll say this, two seconds after they die, go to hell before Jesus comes. If they could, they'd scream at us and wonder why you didn't tell them. It's God's responsibility to save them. No man will come to Christ unless the Spirit of God deals with him. But it's your job and my job responsibility to share the good news or the gospel. We've got good news to share and we need to tell the world that Jesus died, Jesus rose, Jesus saves, and there is no other way to heaven. But what's sad is we'll continue to play games at the foot of the cross. We will. We'll continue to act like it's no big deal while a thousand tanks are lined up on the Gaza Street. While Egypt no longer has a friend in their government that's an ally of this country. <clears throat> While Israel stands alone in the Middle East and God's preparation table is preparing, we'll go play games. I'm just trying to be honest. I know years ago this was called hellfire and brimstone preaching. <clears throat> Take it for what you want. We live in a modern day today where everybody wants to feel good Amen. about living the way they live. Amen. We live in a day today where everybody wants to go to church and everybody wants no responsibility. Don't put no weight on me. I don't have to do no burden stuff. I'm just trying to enjoy my life. Zippity do not having a good time. I'm just doing all this. And, and preacher, I don't like to sit. I don't know a preacher that makes me feel so sad because of all this going to happen. Let me tell you something. Amen. I didn't write that yesterday. Amen. <laughs> There is the period of His coming. I'll give you the final thing. There's a pronouncement of His coming. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye. You know why the trumpet sounded in the Old Testament? The meaning of the trumpet in Roman days was this. When a Roman legion moved, there would be three blasts from the trumpets. The first would tell the troop to take down their tents and prepare to move. The second would alert them to fall in and to line up. The third would be the last trumpet would be a signal to move out. That's the trumpet we're waiting on. It's the moving trumpet. Amen. I wish I had that thing Brother Greg has from the Middle East I could blow, but as much as I ain't for a long time, I'm not sure I could blow it. <laughs> Song of Solomon 2, 10 through 13, My beloved spake and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers build the earth, the time of singing, the birds is come. The voice turtles heard in our land. The fig tree, remember what Jesus did? The fig tree had no green figs. The fig tree put it forth in green figs. And the vines with a tender grape again. A lot of scripture here relating to Israel. A lot. Because there's a lot of things that's got to happen with the nation of Israel. Sometimes people wonder why I get so into that stuff now. I, and I'm, I'm way past the political stuff now. You know, I'm convinced that CNN, Amen. Fox News, and all of them lie. Amen. Just to be honest, all of them. Right. So I'm way past that. I really right now don't even give a real who the president is. Right. Amen. I really don't. I pray for the leadership of our country and let it go. Because it's obvious. It's right. what America wants. Right. Amen. But I ask you a question. Is it what you want? I'm going to ask you something. Why haven't we not fallen earlier? I mean... 1.18 now? Something's 
Some of you that know abortion figures. Was it 1.8 billion, million, what is it a year? Of children? That are butchered? Saline solutions where it looks like battery acid burn them to death? And America proves. Right. Yes. For those of you that watch TV during prime time, do you ever see a program without a sodomite? <coughs> Never. It is so much in front of you. It is there everywhere. The world wants acceptance. You know what God's children do? We laugh. That funny little queer. Little boy jumping around parading himself like he's a little girl. And we laugh. It's so funny. We are so used to the dark that it doesn't even bother us. It hasn't happened yet, but go ahead and get ready. What's going to start happening next is your soap operas are going to be sodomites. And they're going to be kissing all over each other on television for all your children. They're going to be in bed together. You're going to mark my word, I'm telling you. You're going to drive down the interstate billboards, you're going to have two men kissing, advertising jeans. And your youngins are going to be looking at you. And after a while, it won't even bother you. I'm going to tell you why. It's because America has gotten so far away from God. Away from biblical principle. Away from Bible truth. Everybody listen to me. I got your teacher. Listen. Somebody said to me the other day, boy, if God doesn't judge America, he's got to apologize to Sodom and Mark. Everybody's got the idea that the only reason God needs to judge America is because of sodomy. That's way wrong, friend. Right. What about all the shacking up in America? Right. Did you know it's just as much sin for you teenagers to sleep with your boyfriend or girlfriend as it is to sodomites to be together? Right. Do you know it's still sin? Right. God still hates it. That's common, isn't it? Sure. Listen to me. Sir, the girl you're looking at on the internet that has no clothes on in front of you and you get a kick out of it is somebody's daughter. Sure. You got a kid? Won't you think about it? Amen. How's like a bunch of perverts staring at you again? Right. And that's where we are. Amen. That's where we are. So why has not the full judgment of God fell on us? I told my 87-year-old mother today, older generation, they tore up. They see it coming. Young generation, they, we, 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 we're so yuppified, we don't even care. The older generation has seen it coming. I told her today, I said, I am 100% convinced that God's perfect will was done in November and America. Amen. More than I've ever been. Amen. There is no way in America the election should have went that way. No way. Nobody's ever went into office with the economic situation this bad. And right when the momentum got to go the other way, the greatest storm in the history of America brews off the coast of New York. And a man as a governor of a state hugs a president who had lost popularity. He said, I love you. <laughs> Why? Somebody told me, man, I can't believe the timing of that. I can't. Amen. I believe here's what God said. Amen. You want it? I'm going to give it to you. Amen. As soon as it's over, rockets start flying from Gaza right. at a rate like they've never done before. Right. So you don't realize what those people are living under. Imagine walking out of here tonight with your family and all of a sudden
sudden the rain comes on and sirens and you run into a bunker or laying on the ground as you hear rockets being intercepted by your government trying to stop them above your head. Amen. And you live with it every day. Amen. Preacher, why preach it? I'll tell you why. There's got to be just one reason it hasn't all crumbled. And I believe this. There is a remnant in this country that has not bowed the knee, that still believes in the God of the Bible, in salvation by grace, in the blood of the Lamb of God. And that's why I pray with the prophets of old, God in wrath, remember mercy. Amen. God have mercy on our children. God have mercy on them grandbabies. Amen. God don't let America have what it wants. Now all we wait for, all we wait for, them little babies over there snoring, all we wait for is this. Is it when they don't even expect it? All of a sudden, when the world's so peaceful, I'm quiet and laid in mama's arms. As a trumpet of God sounds so loud and wakes us up. And all of a sudden, there we stand. With the precious Son of God. And next time He comes, no cross. Next time He comes, no spear. Next time he comes, no barred donkeys. Next time he comes, there's a vesture dipped in blood. King of kings, Lord of lords. Next time he comes, eyes is a flame of fire. Next time he comes, there's a crown with him. Hallelujah. And somewhere standing in the background of that crowd, I'm going to be shouting, that's my Savior. That's my Lord. That's my World says we're stupid. Excuse me, not smart. The world says, y'all fanatics. I just know this one thing. One Sunday night, I was a hopeless teenager. I was rocking down the road in my car, singing about how I was looking forward to being in hell. And that Sunday night on that second pew, my life changed for me. Close my eyes and can vividly see that man of God say, when I'm walking the aisle. Yes. It's real, it's real. I know it's real. Yes, Hallelujah. Most of you tonight don't have to make preparations to go to heaven for saved. You're going. If Amen. You're saved. But church in one of the greatest mission churches in the state of North Carolina. Why do the buses need to roll? Why does faith promise need to go on the plane? Why do we need tracks? Why do we need to tell? Because we're the remnant. <coughs> Amen. And America's only hope is revival and a turning back to God. Amen. It's a love story. Amen. I'm waiting on my beloved. He's already paid for me. Somebody say amen. amen. He's already paid for me. He's just gone back to the Father. Yes. And when daddy says it's time. Amen. Even so. Come. Oh yeah. I walked in children's wards. I've walked with kids crying with cancer. I've been with families that have lost a loved one and weeping on the floor. Don't even want you have to drag them off the floor. But when he comes. 
I'll never have to do that again. Hey. Hey. You say, well, you're living in a dream world. No, no. I'm living in reality. Amen. Amen. Right. The rest of the people living in a dream world. Amen. Right. Stand our feet with our heads. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen.